Okay, so we are continuing from where we left off yesterday. Today is now kickoff day in about yes. an, an hour, hour and a half or so. <laughs> an hour and a half. <laughs> All right, let's see if we can get done on time. We yes. probably won't because we still have like 12 teams or something. Yeah, but these teams aren't. Aren't as good, so maybe don't have as much to talk maybe about as far as their postseason up. aspirations. <laughs> Speaking of which, what do you think about the Bears? The Bears, yeah. Obviously, they got a big hype train coming in with Caleb Williams, uh, the number one overall pick, and he's definitely set up to succeed. He's got tons of tools around him. Uh, they've got great receivers. They've got really good running backs. Their offensive line is actually really solid. So he's set up to succeed, mm-hmm. but at the same time, he's inexperienced. First, you know, first year in the league, it's always going to be some growing pain. So we'll see how well he deals with the pressure and uh, how much he can kind of rein in his like Superman tactics that he's kind of sometimes fallen victim to. So I think that they'll have an interesting season. I'm interested to see how Caleb Williams uh, performs, uh, but I definitely think this is going to still be like a growing pains year and okay. probably going to be like seven wins, maybe. <laughs> so something I do want to bring up is yesterday we were talking about where is DeAndre Swift? Turns out yes. he is with the Bears. So is, yeah. we, we got that confirmed. Yes, yeah, so they have him and Khalil Herbert, who's their backup now. And it's like, that's a pretty good running back room. <laughs> I've I've seen a lot of people like really buy into the Bears. I was like, yeah, the NFC North is going to have three playoff teams. I'm like, I don't, I don't know if I buy that. Like, I think they're going to be a very good offense, but am I quite yeah. buying the hype? But yesterday I said Dallas isn't making the playoffs. And it's, I, I won't lie, that is a pretty blazing take. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, if they're not making it, then who's who like, who's taking <laughs> those spots? Yeah. The Bucks. Maybe the Bears. The Maybe Bucks. the Bears actually <laughs> take a wild card. I'm kind of starting to talk myself into it. It's mm. like, all right, you got three, but like two for sure really good receivers. And then yeah. Roma Dunze is also a rookie. It seems like he's going to be really good. Like, dude, oh, yeah. blazing fast. Yeah, that dude's a stud. If Caleb is the dude that people say that he is, I think they can get, like, the seventh seed. Maybe. So I, mean, I, I might talk myself out of it later, but for now I'll say, you know what? I'll say the Bears get a low playoff seed. Okay. I say and definitely in, like, a couple of years, I could definitely see them being contenders. Mm-hmm. I think that this year is just still going to be, like, them feeling stuff out. So we'll see. Uh, another oh, young yeah, team. Yo, I'll ask you this. Do you think they can beat the Packers this year? Because mm. I remember when Lovey Smith was hired. Like This is a while ago. One of his big things is, I promise we will finally be able to beat the Packers again. And <laughs> they did like maybe twice in his tenure. Yeah, yeah. Like, I don't think it was that Poor bad. But they... That was the whole Aaron Rodgers, like, I own you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, I, you know, I'm not really high on the Packers this year, but everyone else is. So it's like, it feels like the Packers probably would beat them, but I think it's going to be a good game. I think that right now I would still probably take the Packers barely over the Bears. Um, but yeah, it would be close. I think that they could make it an interesting game. Uh, so yeah, moving on to the Colts. They, uh, they're the 20th FPI ranked team. They've only got a 21% chance to win their division, 36% chance to make the playoffs. Um, obviously Anthony Richardson coming back from his season ending injury last season. So what do you think they're going to be able to pull off this year? You know what? I'm going to retract something I said in the last video. Okay. Anthony Richardson is going to be comeback player of the year, not Aaron Rodgers. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that, that is a good pick. Because I was saying in the last one that I was like, you know, I had someone else winning the division. I wasn't going to pick Houston, but I've kind of talked myself into Houston. I was going to say the Colts. Yeah. And part of that is, when I look at what happened last season, mm-hmm. they were like a botched fourth down play away from winning the division. And that's even with the loss to Cleveland, that honestly shouldn't have happened, but not for genuinely bullshit calls at the end. Like, the Colts were really a playoff team last year. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they were able to make it again. And, like, you know, assuming health for every team... I liked what I saw of Anthony Richardson. It was only, like, two or three games. Like, yeah. dude was dynamic as hell. Yeah, he was really solid. And that was, again, like, in his rookie season. So, even though he was injured, he still has that full year of development mm-hmm. in, you know, with the team, being able to learn schemes, plays, all that kind of stuff. So, I definitely think he's going to be able to take a big step this year. Uh, obviously, he is a, a big step up in their quarterback play. <laughs> From Carter Minshew. <laughs> 
<laughs> he's, he's a starter now. Yeah, and I mean, like, he was keeping the team afloat. Again, like, they still almost made the playoffs was, with but Uncle Rico. I think you definitely can't, can't deny. I think Anthony Richardson's probably got a bigger, a higher ceiling than, than Gardner Minshew. Uh, but they're also, uh, Jonathan Taylor, you know, wasn't really healthy last year. So, I mean, if he comes back and is able to have a full season healthy, mm-hmm. that would be huge. Uh, they also, I'm pretty sure, didn't they draft uh, Adonai Mitchell from Texas? That sounds familiar. They did. Yeah. I, I, I know they were the first team to pick defense in the draft, mm-hmm. which is wild that it took that long. They were picked like 16 or something. Yeah, that was a uh, that dude from was it Michigan? That Latu dude? Or maybe that was, it was like. Uh, Actually, I think just they, they drafted earlier. someone. I, I remember it wasn't Dallas Turner because a lot of people he thought was from he UCLA. was UCLA. Okay. Yeah, like Layatu Latu. I might have just butchered that guy's name, but uh, <laughs> yeah, he was the first defensive player taken off the board this year, um, and he was a really solid player. So I mean, they got him. They got Quiddy Pay too on the uh, other defensive end. So their defense is probably going to be pretty solid. Uh, of course, off- offensively they've got a ton of weapons, but just not a whole lot of longevity uh, for their for sure. roster. I think they said that this is the first time that uh, the Colts have a quarterback that is starting in consecutive year opening games. This since, actually is! Oh my god! Since Because he got, it Andrew was like Luck, Luck Scott Tolson, Jacoby Brissett, Carson Wentz, Matt Ryan. Yeah. I think there's a couple others I'm missing. I, like obviously Anthony, Anthony Richardson. Richardson last year. Yeah. I forgot it. It's been, it's was like seven or eight years in a row. 2012. That's what it was when Andrew Luck did the last the last oh uh, consecutive game for an, an opener for the Colts quarterback. So finally getting some consistency at the quarterback position, which is. Obviously, a big <laughs> deal. Um, ask the Cleveland Cavaliers. Or Cleveland Cavaliers. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ask the Cleveland Browns. Uh, the, but, I mean, no, yeah. I, I think that they will be an interesting team. And again, growing pains. Going to have to see how they all mesh together. Uh, so, don't think that the ceiling for them is super high. But I do think that they're an interesting team. Mm-hmm. I don't think that they're going to win their division. <laughs> I. <laughs> There's still that part of me that's like, you know what, I kind of want to say it. With how volatile the AFC South has been the past few years, I could see it happening. I do think Houston is just too good on paper right now. It's like, to it's me, it's hard to discount them. I feel like I look at Houston and I say, this is why I don't think Dallas will make the playoffs. Houston is a team that said, this is how we did last year. Let's capitalize on that. Let's get better. Let's go get some guys that can make us better. Yeah. And, like, I believe in that. And then I look at the Cowboys just saying, eh, we're, not we're gonna, kind of fine we don't with wanna, where we're we at. We don't even want to pay our quarterback or our best receiver. <laughs> and I feel like Houston it will probably win the division, but I'm going to say the Colts get a wild card. Okay. I could, I could definitely see that. Again, they do have a decent amount of talent on paper. Um, it's just one of those things, their, their lack of consistency and – Stuff just makes it hard to have confidence in them. <laughs> but we shall see. Uh, so up next, you want to guess? Is this you know finally this? Tampa? Not yet. Been, where the hell? Dude, Tampa was like one of the last few teams last year. I'm a Saints fan. I don't like the Bucks, but like, where the hell are they? This feels weird. They are coming up soon. I, I know okay. that. Uh, but so next, it's them boys out in Seattle. Okay. The Seahawks. Uh they wrote me off. I didn't write back. I do. I love Geno Smith. <laughs> you know, we, we, we were talking about with the Lions, like just a really likable team. Yeah. I feel at least that much about Geno Smith. Yeah, I could get behind that. And also, I mean, like I, I really like their uh, their receiving core too. DK Metcalf, uh, uh, Tyler Lockett, and uh, yeah, Nijigba Smith or whatever. Those I've guys. seen Tyler Lockett make so many crazy They're, catches over those, his career. Those are studs. Uh, that's a that's a stacked wide receiver room for sure. So Geno's at least going to have some options to throw to. Uh, not sure who there is. It uh, still Kenneth Walker is their running back, right? I think. And it's like I don't know because I feel like he didn't have like a super great season last year, did he? I'm not sure. I'm trying to remember who the coach is now because I know it's, it's not Carol it's not anymore. Carol anymore. It's, Mike McDon- uh, McDonald. McDonald. It, I think he was Baltimore's DC. He was. Okay. Uh, 
and it was like I saw a thing that said like when he was their DC in twenty twenty three they had like they posted the highest defensive EPA since the twenty nineteen uh, Patriots, and what was really weird was let me see if I can find it real quick. Yeah, so the defensive EPA for the twenty twenty three Ravens was one hundred and twelve point eight. The 2019 Patriots was 171 point <laughs> <laughs> The 2019 Patriots were monsters. That was that was the year when they beat the Rams, right? Uh, I'd have to look back on it and see. It's been that's that's five years ago now. That's a long time. <laughs> that was a really good defense. I think that was. I think Stephon Gilmore might have been defensive player of the year that year. But they were sorry, stacked up. Track. But no, yeah. So they definitely brought in a, a strong defensive-minded coach, which, you know, kind of makes you start to think about, like, the Legion of Boom era. And, like, maybe we'll start to see some more of that. Uh, hopefully so. I mean, that was an, an exciting era of football to watch for Seattle. So uh, it's just one of those teams where they don't – doesn't feel like they have enough going uh, on to make them feel like a contender. Uh, and, you know, some of the guys that they have in their skill positions are a little bit older – and not at, at the prime of their game anymore, so they're they just feel like a one of those like middling pack kind of teams where it's like sure they'll probably get seven six or seven wins, but I don't think that they'll get a wild card spot. I think they'll miss the playoffs entirely. I feel like they could. Like two years ago, they got a wild card spot. Last year, they were only a game out of it. Yeah, I think if I'm being honest. I would probably put the Rams ahead of the Seahawks and getting a wild card spot. I think probably the same for the Cowboys. Yeah. But I think they could make a shot, but I don't think I could pick them either. Yeah. And part of that is, like, as much as I love Geno, I feel like Geno is one of those high floor, lower ceiling kind of players. Like, I yeah. want to see him he's do well. He's a good game manager, mm-hmm. but he's not going to go out and throw six touchdowns in a game and 500 yards or whatever, you know. The, I feel bad that, like, I think the most memorable play I can think of for Geno Smith is him getting bum rushed by Aaron Donald. Just like, oh shit! <laughs> hey, it's, it's so realistic. funny. It's it's like one hundred percent. Be like, damn dude. I'm but not at the same time, you know, he's not going to have to face Aaron Donald twice a year anymore. Yeah, that's and, true. Maybe that'll give him a big boost of confidence. I'll be like, no more Aaron Donald. I no more fears. <laughs> oh man. But yeah. So overall. Uh, not super high on the Seahawks. Okay, I think I see Tampa finally, yeah, yeah. finally, finally coming up. 2022. That, that feels low. Like, I probably would have said Tampa around, like, 16 at worst. They did have a decent amount of turnover on their defense. They lost uh, Shaq Barrett, Devin White, and Carlton Davis III. Okay, all those pretty, are some pretty, pretty big starters for them. Um... They did do uh, some upgrading on their offensive line, which is nice. They brought in uh, Bucky Irving from Oregon in the sixth round. Uh, so their ground game is probably going to be pretty solid. Uh, we'll just have to see exactly how much was they're running back. It uh, was Rashad White okay, last that, year. That um, they did bring back Mike Evans. And yeah, I remember there's some speculation he might go to Kansas City, which would have been insane. Yeah, that would have been insane. They do probably still need another good, like, receiving option. Uh, I mean, right now they're projecting Jalen McMillan to be, like, one of the, like, bigger targets for him. And it's like, that's like a, he was a third string person. <laughs> so, we'll see. Uh, they do still have uh, Cameron Bright, right? At tight end. So. so, still options. And, of course, Baker can still get that Baker magic. So, I don't know. I could see them pulling a wild card. Their division is so bad. Yeah, I... Like, there's honestly a chance that they win their division. Like we were talking about earlier, it's like, the Falcons on paper should be better than the Buccaneers, but not by much, and... I, I feel like on paper, the Falcons look a lot better than the Buccaneers. I just don't trust them to put it together. Yeah. And then I'm, I mean, we'll we'll get to why I don't think it'll be the Saints when we talk about my Saints. But I'm like, all right, I don't think it's the Falcons. I don't think it's the Saints. Not the it's not the Panthers. It's, it's kind of the Bucks by default for yeah. me. 
Yeah, and, it's and like, even still, like they're a team that they've won it the past couple. Of years. They didn't have Brady last year. They were still able to. It's still a mediocre division that they won, but they still got it done. No, yeah, and that's the thing is like even with like teams that uh, I mean, again, nobody was picking the Buccaneers last year to make it to the postseason, so they have been in this situation before where it doesn't look like they should be fielding a good team, and yet postseason rolls around, and who's there? The Buccaneers. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, I could definitely see them, I mean, getting a wild card slot or, again, maybe even just outright winning their division. I'll say, I, of all the picks, this is the one I hope I'm the most wrong about, <laughs> but oh, I yeah. think they probably kind of win it by default. Yeah, I could kind of see that. Uh, we'll see. I mean, Atlanta's got Kirk Thuggins now, so. I don't even know. I don't even know if he's going to start. But like, I, just because oh, of the, injury, yeah, like, I the, don't know when we'll actually see Cousins. Yeah, I didn't know if they had mentioned his timeline yet. You think they're going to start Penix? They might. I, did he have an injury too? Maybe. I, I Do they still like, have uh, the kid from Cincinnati that played last year? No. Really? Okay, so he was on the Cardinals, and the Cardinals cut him. Oh man, rough. Yeah, so he's probably not playing anywhere anymore. <laughs> he's going go to he's gonna go to the XFL. <laughs> <laughs> hey, every once in a while you see names there. You're like, you're oh. like Trent Richardson. <laughs> oh, I remember that guy. He he was a, a player in the NFL for a little bit, uh, but it's very few and far between. I think like, it's like mostly college guys that. No, it wasn't the XFL. I think it was like the people. AAF or AFL a couple years ago. Mm-hmm. Like their MVP was PJ Walker. That was another one of the QBs that was on the Browns last year. Was PJ Walker? Wow. Yeah, I totally forgot about him. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> moving on. Uh, is this, are the Saints next? Nope. Not good. The other uh, Sooners quarterback in the league. They have the Cardinals above the Saints. Hey, Kyler Murray is healthy now. I feel offended. Like, Kyler don't get Murray, me wrong. Kyler Murray I, is a better quarterback than Derek Carr. I don't expect the Saints to be high, but below the Cardinals. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yep. They are your your Saints are pretty low. They they gotta be really high on Marvin Harrison. And like I, I don't I don't blame them for that. They are. But. And Marvin Harrison Jr. obviously is like one of those rookies that they're bringing in, and it's like he's going to start and he's going to be their number one guy. I mean, maybe behind Trey McBride, but it's hard to make a tight end really your number one. So it's gonna be Marvin Harrison Jr. It kind of was for Brady for like forever. Long. Yeah, and the. But you could argue that West was also getting a good amount of this. No, that's true too. But when it was Gronk and uh, Hernandez, Hernandez for that like one season, then it was definitely the tight tight ends were number one. Uh, maybe like Tony Gonzalez back when he was like the Chiefs. That dude was or even stud. with the Falcons. No, because there was also Roddy White. Yeah, Roddy White. Roddy White. Julio Jones. They had a really good receiving core. I mean, look at the Chiefs though. That's Travis Kelsey is their number one. That's true. That's true. Uh, but yeah, yeah. I mean, a healthy Kyler is a pretty big game changer for them. I mean, he's been injured so much and not been able to play full seasons. To uh, to be able to see him at a hundred percent, I think will be really, really interesting. He's a really dynamic quarterback, and so if he has any of the speed that he used to have, I think that'll be a huge game changer for them. Uh, I don't know who their starting running back is anymore. It feels like they change them all the time. <sighs> It was, um... Oh, no, it was James Conner, wasn't James it? Con- well, they had James Conner, and they also had, uh... What's his name? Like, David something, I thought. Oh, um... David Johnson? I Maybe? No. That, was David Johnson even in the league last year? Let's just look at their depth chart. See who they're running Because I remember against. David... Because I remember David Johnson had that, like, crazy fucking season. I think it was with the Cardinals. Yeah. Then he was traded... That was, He was part of the DeAndre Hopkins trade to the Texans, and then he wasn't that good. I think he got injured. Yeah, I have no idea if he's still in the league. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so they have James Conner as their number one still, and then Trey Benson as their backup, and then Amari DiMarcado, which was their third last year. Oh, right. But... Yep. Yeah. I'm just looking through the rest of their Michael Wilson. Yeah, so Marvin Harrison Jr. is listed as their wide receiver one. <laughs> and then Michael Wilson and then Greg Dortch. 
good old Dorch. So here's what I think of the Cardinals. Last season, they were not a particularly good team. But they were also a team that had a lot of fights, like game in and game out. I was frequently impressed by how they were one of those teams, like they're a, they're a bad team, but they're not a pushover team. And I think a lot of that is probably credit to Jonathan Gannon. I remember in the off season he was the, like, you got fire in your gut and had that really weird opening presser. I think it was yeah. when he was interacting with like Rondell Moore. He's doing like pew, pew, pew. Like, this dude is weird. This dude is kind of goofy, but yeah. he's got his team fighting, and I got to respect that. Right. I feel like that's still kind of what they're going to be. They're going to be a very scrappy team. They're going to lose. I feel like they're going to lose a lot of games. There's yeah. definitely going to be some blowouts. <laughs> but yeah, they're they a don't team have that's really going to. They're going to show up and fight game after game, and they're going to definitely get some wins that you won't expect them to. I still think they're probably last in the division, because yeah. I think, I mean, San Francisco's winning it. I do think the Rams are probably getting a playoff spot. Exactly. Seattle's maybe getting one. Seattle's close to getting one. Yeah, I think Seattle's still a tier above what Arizona is working it. with. Not by much. And, again, uh... It'll really just remain to be seen because Kyler is like such a big X factor in it. It'll ha- we'll have to see which version of Kyler that they have. Because if it's like 2021 Kyler, then they have a chance to win shootouts, which mm-hmm. they will probably have to do because, again, their defense is just not good and they just also are dealing with a ton of injuries on that side of the ball. So they will probably be forced to have to put up a lot of points if they have, you know, prime Kyler they have a chance to keep up with some of those other offenses and pull out some of those wins. So, again, we'll see. Like you said, I do think they're probably going to lose a significant number of games. Um, I don't think that they're going to make the playoffs. They'll probably be last in their division. But I do think that they'll be more interesting to watch this year than they were last year. So that's something for them. I definitely agree with that, with a fully healthy Kyler and um, Marvin. Marvin Harrison Jr., yeah. I'm going to say the Raiders are next. Yes, Las Vegas Raiders are next. Uh, they got Max Crosby and Christian Wilkins now, which is that, they got him from the Dolphins. Monstrous front line, disgusting. Um, Love Devontae. I don't know how they still have Devontae, Devontae Adams. Adams. I think he wants to be caught, <laughs> and he denied that. Like there was like recently a thing that was saying like because uh, Deshaun Jackson or something was like on a podcast saying that like. Oh yeah, Devontae Adams is like unhappy in Las Vegas and wants to get out. And Devontae Adams was like, I've spoken to Deshaun Jackson maybe three or four times in my entire life. I've never <laughs> talked to him about that. <laughs> he was like, the only person I talk to about stuff like that is my wife, and she's not on social media. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. He's he's adamant that he loves it. I mean, it is Las Vegas, so who cares if you're not really winning? He's making tons of money and probably having a great time. But uh Yeah, now uh, Upgrading their quarterback position with Gardner Minshew. From Jimmy G to AOC to Uncle Rico. That's yeah. that's an where is Garoppolo now? Shoot, I couldn't tell you. Uh let's see. I genuinely I, I know I looked it up the other day and I don't remember. I want to say Tennessee, but like that does not feel right. I know he's not starting wherever he is. Could just be a free agent. Los Angeles Rams. Oh shit! Okay. So he's backing up Stafford. That's a, he's old. He's getting old too now. That would be an, that'd be interesting. If again, I'm not wishing injury on anybody, but like if he has to step up for the Rams and play the 49ers at one point, <laughs> I could be. He's like, I'm back. Uh, so yeah, the biggest question obviously for the Raiders is, is Gardner Minshew the guy? Mm-hmm. Uh, they do still have Aiden O'Connell as the backup, and he's still young. Obviously, I mean, this is only his like second season, mm-hmm. so he can still grow. Uh, so we'll see if that's a, a viable option. But maybe they're just trying to have someone to kind of give him more time to get up to speed. But yeah. Overall, their prospects don't look super great. Uh, Devontae Adams is, like, their main good person. Him and Trey Tucker. Trey Tucker is pretty good. Uh, but you got to have someone good to throw to the receivers. So that's going to be the tough ask 
to me, I think the Raiders are kind of going to be the AFC version of the Cardinals. And a lot of that is also the same thing with the coach. Like, I remember really liking Antonio Pierce last year. Like, this is a guy that has a lot of... He's got a lot of charisma. It feels like he's... Because I think he was a former player as well. Mm-hmm. He does have that kind of sense of grit to him. Like, we're going to fight hard. No one's going to kick our asses. Like, smoking cigars in the locker room with the guys. Like, he's... He reminds me a lot of Dan Campbell. He's very much a player's coach. Mm-hmm. I think they are going to be a 6-7 win-ish team... They're going to win some games that you really don't expect them to. They're not going to make the playoffs. They're not going to be that great overall. But they're going to be pretty solid with definite room to grow and for improvement. I'm actually going to be a little bit harder. On them. I think they're going to win five games. And that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think they can beat the Chiefs? I think they beat them in a game last year. I, I mean, like, you know, technically any team could beat beat any, any team on any given <laughs> any Sunday. Sunday. Uh, but I don't think that the Raiders have a very good shot at beating the Chiefs this year. It could happen, but all... Uh, what is it? Experience and knowledge and on-paper talent says absolutely says no. not. <laughs> absolutely not. So, yeah, no. I don't think that they're going to steal a game from the Chiefs. Uh, it would be funny, though, if that was one of their, like, five wins. <laughs> it's like... Uh, they beat Kansas City twice. <laughs> wow, Kansas City's so bad. <laughs> they lost to the Raiders twice. Uh, okay, so, moving on. It's still not your Saints. Yeah, it's like, Washington? No. That guys, no, that's too high. That's too high. Um, now I'm actually... Uh, Fuck, who's left? I don't think it's the Giants. So I don't. I don't think it's the NFC East. I think we've done the we've done the entire NFC West. Is it Denver? Nope. Oh, okay. It is uh, Sam Darnold's team. Oh, the wow Minnesota Vikings. They have the Vikings over the Saints at twenty five. I mean, fucking hell! They did get Aaron Jones. Uh, I mean, they they got Justin Jefferson, but. They got Stephen Gilmore, uh, Jonathan Greener to Andrew Van Ginkle, and Dallas Turner, all edge rushers. Um, J.J. McCarthy obviously went down with a season-ending knee injury, and so Sam Donald is now once again Seeing starting moves. quarterback for a NFL franchise, and we will see how bad that goes. Justin Jefferson is going to request a trade by the end of the season. Would be I don't think he will. I think he will. And the reason is, if they just got a rookie, then maybe if he sees something in McCarthy, I don't, yeah, know. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. I just feel like I mean, like JJ McCarthy wasn't even like that hype of like a quarterback pick. Either. See, that's the weird thing because from the bits that I had seen, it didn't seem like he. I, I would agree with that, but I heard so many people hyping him up, like, no. He's the guy, you know, someone's going to, like, trade up. Again. Like, no one's taking him as the first QB. That's going to be Caleb, but I heard a lot of hype for J.J. McCarthy. Yeah, Then again, like I mean, there's always that like, one dude that comes out of nowhere and everyone's like, dude, you've got to draft Mitch Trubisky. Or, uh, freaking Sam Darnold. <laughs> Sam Darnold. Or the other Jets guy. God, what is his name? Uh, Wilson? Yeah. Yeah. What is his first name? Zach? Zach. <laughs> That guy, yeah, like take a flyer on a five foot eight quarterback from BYU. That didn't work out. Who was it? Was it uh? Oh, I can't remember his name now. But he was the guy that won the Super Bowl with the Bears. I think he was a quarterback from BYU. Oh, this is bothering me. Fuck. Anyways, the moving court. on. When they won Jim that McMahon, game. that's it. I think oh, Jim that was McMahon like was a BYU. No, yeah, but I was oh. actually trying to think. I was like, I know there was a BYU. I thought you were talking about like back in like when they won with like Erlach or whatever. I was like, I'm no, no, I don't no. remember who their quarterback was. I was like, wasn't was that Jake Cutler? <laughs> that, that was that, that was Rex Grossman. But that was they lost the Super Bowl to Peyton and the Colts. Rex Grossman. But Devin Hester took the opening kickoff to the house. Devin Hester was so badass. That dude was so fast. Uh, Anyways, we're on the yeah. Vikings. So, yeah. so, the Vikings last year, 
I remember the first few games of the season. It's like, here's a team with all this offensive talent, and they are playing up to it, but the that defense could team. not stop a soul. Mm-hmm. And then, that from what I remember, that kind of never really changed. Yeah. I remember, though, there was a game, I think it was against the Raiders, where the defense played really well. But I think that was also because the Raiders just didn't really know what the hell they were doing in that point. was like, I don't know how to throw a football. I think that was a game where like, the Raiders got shut out, and then the next week was their game against the Chargers where they beat them like 63 to 20 or some weird shit. But I don't I don't really believe in the Vikings. Like, no. kind of not at all. I think they're... I genuinely think they're going to be one of the worst teams. Like, kind of like what you were just saying about the Raiders. That's what I think the Vikings are going to be. Like, they'll win a couple games, but yeah, I don't think they're going to be very good. Yeah, I think I have less confidence in the Vikings than I do the Raiders. I think the Raiders would beat the Vikings. Uh, yeah, I mean, Sam Darnold is just like... It's like uh, he's a career loser, you know? Which is, like, harsh, but it's his career unreal. stats... He has 63 touchdowns to 56 interceptions. That is a terrible it's, ratio. It's not good. <laughs> it's not good. It's a terrible ratio. Um, but, I mean, he is a veteran now at this point. <laughs> so, who knows? Maybe uh, being a journeyman of like four or five different teams will mean that he has learned something. So, uh, But still definitely not enough to inspire any kind of vote of confidence for them. I say they're going to win three games. <laughs> no, I wouldn't I wouldn't fight you on that. Like that feels kind of accurate. Three like, games. And I do, I do think that Justin Jefferson is going to request a trade. Cuz unless he like really was impressed with JJ McCarthy, I just like again, it's like it's not like they brought in someone like Caleb Williams or mm-hmm. like Trevor Lawrence or where it was like, "Oh, this is a generational quarterback. Like we we are definitely building around this guy." Like JJ McCarthy felt kind of like a yeah, we got a quarterback got a that dude. won the he won the national championship. And it's like JJ McCarthy was like solid in college. He was never again didn't really feel like a, a superstar player. So and maybe that was the system that he was in. I don't know. Uh, now that system is going to go and try to make Justin Herbert a winner. <laughs> so yeah, definitely not high on the uh, the purple people eaters this year. Unfortunately, they need to go back to the Adrian Peterson years. Oh, so I got to think about who's left. Denver, Tennessee, the Patriots, Saints, Panthers, Giants, Commanders. Giants, Commanders. Is that it? So is there only seven left? Yep. All right. We are at 26. All right, I would put the Saints probably above most of those teams. Is it finally New Orleans? It is finally the New oh. Orleans Saints. Oh, great. At number 26. They have an 18.6% chance to win their division, a 29.5% chance to make the playoffs. They have the third easiest strength of schedule. No, I believe that. they had the ter- easiest schedule. Division. They had the easiest schedule last year, and it didn't fucking matter. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and hop in. So here's the first thing I have to <laughs> say. And this is stupid, and this is goofy. But, I mean, some of my takes have been stupid and goofy anyways. Dad, so Derek Carr is a good quarterback. A few, I'm not gonna say that. <laughs> I don't. I'm a lot more lenient on Derek Carr than a lot of other people are. But I a just, few years ago, there was a Raiders fan who said, "You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna flip a coin and use that to determine every Raiders game." And he had them by the end of the coin flips going ten and seven and making the playoffs. And he got all but two games right. Dang. And those two games ended up like correcting themselves, so they finished ten and seven and made the playoffs. So like, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do this. Game by game, we're gonna flip them. We're losing week one to Carolina. Okay. <laughs> I hope this coin is wrong, that but something about this feels right. Does not bode like, well. For it this feels season. like some kind of weird bullshit that would happen to the Saints. So okay, let's see how it goes. And then everyone's like, yo, the Panthers are legit. They're gonna win T. They're so it was like 0-2, oh but then won the next two, and then won the next three, but then lost the last, next three. I'm like, okay, I mean, it's a coin flip, so it al- it's almost kind of evening out. They go into their bye five and six. After the bye week, they won five straight. So they're 10 and six, actually looking pretty good. The last game of the season is against Tampa. I'm like, okay, I feel like this is a, yo, you win the game, you're in the playoffs, you maybe win the division. 
lose the game, finish 10-7. and seven. So I'm like, alright, is that <coughs> enough to make the playoffs? Let me flip the coin. <coughs> no. 10-7 and seven misses the playoffs. Uh, do we at least fire Dennis Allen? We do at least fire Dennis Allen, so I guess it's not a wasted season. I th- <coughs> it's fascinating to me, and again, like who? Kn- this is probably not going to happen because the idea of this random ass coin flip actively, like accurately predicting the season is bananas. Mm-hmm. But if it does, it means the Saints something changes in the bye week, and I don't know if that's they go to Rattler, if they fire Dennis Allen, if they just somehow get their shit together and they start winning. And it's the most Saints fucking thing that could happen. To be mediocre, underachieving, and now that it seems out of reach, start clicking, start playing well, and at the very end, it doesn't matter. Because week after week, game after game, it was the same shit last year. We're down like 24 points to the Vikings. I'm like, okay, you know what? I don't have to look anymore because this is over. We suck. But I'm checking because I'm checking all the games. I'm like, oh, the Saints scored. It doesn't matter. Okay, we scored again. No, and I have hope. We scored matter. again. Doesn't matter. Yo, maybe we can do this. No, yeah, it doesn't matter. It happened against the Vikings, the Jaguars, the Rams. I think it happened again like one or two other games too. And that was just the consistent theme of the season. It's your mediocre so is the division. You've got a chance. And last year and the year before, hearing Dennis Allen every fucking week being like, yo, I know we're not that great. I know we could be better. But the division sucks too. We're right where we need to be. We're right where we want to be. This is where we want to be. We look like shit. You can say that if you're the Buccaneers or the Falcons. But you can't say that if you're the Panthers or the Saints. You can't say that... like. It's one thing to say we're in first place and we're a good team. It's like, yeah, we're tied for first. We're like five and seven. We're not as good as we should be, but we're competing for the division. It was consistent, accepted mediocrity for these last two years, and I have hated it. And seeing this motherfucker at the end of last season apologize to Arthur Smith because his players said, no, we're going to score a touchdown because our teammate here was the league leader in touchdowns last year and he hasn't scored once on the season. We are giving him one. We're giving this to Atlanta and it was beautiful and the fan base loved it. And this motherfucker goes to Arthur Smith and says, my bad. I'm sorry. Like, where is the swagger? Where is the personality of the Saints? This man is a black hole of culture, and I hate it. I can't, I mean, it's still my team, but I'm like, I have no faith right now in this team with this dude. He can call a defense. Like, the reason I'm so surprised that the Saints are so low on the list is the defense is really fucking good, but. I I think Derek Carr is fine, but he's not great. I don't have a lot of faith in him, unfortunately. I think we do have some good receivers. Olave is a beast. Yeah. Rashid, Rashid is fast Rashid as is hell. Like, really I love good. watching this dude play. <coughs> I don't know what position Taysom Hill even plays, because he just plays football they player, but he does it all well. just make Taysom Hill the starting quarterback. We did that one year, and we still beat the Falcons. <laughs> and it was... Beautiful. That's what oh, that was another funny thing about Taysom the coin flip. Well. We split with Carolina, got swept by Tampa, but we did sweep Atlanta. And I'm like, you know what? If this season ends with Dennis Allen being fired and we beat the Falcons twice, I'm okay with not making the playoffs. Would you rather lose to the Panthers or lose to the Falcons? Lose to the Panthers. Really? Oh, 100%. Like... Are, are, the Falcons are the number one rival in the division. This is the, like, you know, we hate you and you hate us, and this is what we but want. the Panthers are so bad. Oh, they're so bad. Like, I feel like losing like to the... By a junior high team. Losing to the Panthers is embarrassing. Losing to Atlanta, though, it's like, that's just a stain on my soul. Like, no, no. Also, the season series, like, the... 
not the season series, but like the actual historical rivalry between the Saints and the Falcons is dead even right now in terms of wins and losses. Like, all right, oh, so we can't, yeah, yeah. Like, we can't lose that. Like, <laughs> you're, you're gonna, I feel it in my bones. Atlanta's gonna sweep you guys this year. No, fuck that. Hot, shit. hot take. I don't think that's a hot <laughs> take. I just disagree with it. hot take. Uh, but that, that's my Saints rant. Um, the I, coin said they don't make the playoffs, so I'll say they don't make the playoffs. They should, but they won't. I didn't realize that they got Chase Young. Yeah, they did get Chase Young. <laughs> that's pretty gnarly. I thought he was still the commander. Looks like he's got to put on some weight. That'd be the monster, though. Uh, you have anything <laughs> to add about the Saints? <laughs> I feel like you covered the Saints pretty well. <laughs> They're going to be bad. <laughs> you think will be worse than Carolina? <laughs> no, I think you'll be better okay. than Carolina. I think you'll be better. I think, I think that you will be better than every other team that is remaining on the list. Uh, and we have another in-division rival for you here. Is this Carolina? No. They're the only other team in the division. Because we've already done uh, Atlanta and uh, Tampa. Oh, I was getting confused. It's Tennessee. Oh, <laughs> I was getting mixed up uh, with Tampa. So the Titans are next, twenty seventh on the list. <laughs> I I haven't looked into this. Apparently, Will Levis has like a mayo themed cologne. I can believe it. <laughs> I think his like whole like branding like, thing is like is, I'm a white like, guy. He's like, all right, someone saw how much I liked mayonnaise, and that's just my entire personality. <laughs> and you know what, man? Good for him. He found his niche. He found something he loves. And I have seen that dude throw a football real good. I, I think it was Will Levis. I saw a play where he threw a pick. And as the guy was returning the pick, he strips the guy and recovers the fumble. Like, I, it was a really cool play to watch. I think it was against, like, the Colts or the Jaguars. Yeah. No, yeah. They, uh, the Titans... I, I don't know. I mean, their defense is probably going to be their best... Uh, They've got some good receivers. I mean, that Calvin Ridley is a good player. He was injured last year. Hopefully, he's healthy now. Yeah. DeAndre, ha- DeAndre, that was a stupid way of saying that. DeAndre, DeAndre. Hopkins <laughs> is older, Old. but he's still he's I, still DeAndre. Hopkins. He's still DeAndre Hopkins. I've seen. I think people are really overlooking Tennessee, myself included. Like, I don't think they're a playoff team by any means. Yeah. But I don't think they're like the super pushover either. I, I'm kind of like kind of what I was saying about the Raiders. This is a team that I think is gonna give more people trouble than they're expecting. Actually, who's their coach now? Because they don't have Vrabel anymore. Uh I, I don't remember who they replaced them with. They brought in uh Denard Wilson as their defensive coordinator from uh Baltimore. But I'm not sure who their head coach is now. Could you check that real quick? Yeah, let me see if it shows. <laughs> Will it show on their depth chart? Maybe. Coach. Maybe. No, <laughs> Here's the backup the coach. First, first string coach. Backup coach. <laughs> Who's the third string coach for the Tennessee Titans? Who's that? Okay, so I, I don't know who the coach is, so I don't know Hang on, I'll look up how much, I guess, how much extra credit I can give Tennessee for that. But I feel like they'll be a, a kind of like a 5-6-ish six win team. Brian Callahan. I have no idea who that is. Yeah, I don't know either. I hope he's good. Like, I... I not think, wishing anything could get bad against him, but... It looks like he used to be working with the Bengals. Oh, is he their OC? I'm not sure. I just saw that he was in a Bengals, <laughs> like, jacket. Um, yeah, I've never heard of him, so... Must be some new guy. If he is their OC, like, they've had a really good offense the past few years. He might be someone who can really utilize Calvin Ridley and DeAndre Hopkins. Yeah. Let's see. Um... I think they have Pollard in the backfield, and I've seen him play really well. I, again, I feel like there's enough pieces for them to not be terrible. That, that's kind of where I am with Tennessee. 
Yeah, uh, they do have Tony Pollard too as their like starting running back, and that dude's pretty solid. So they uh, Will Levis is still young. I uh, don't know if he's like how good he's going to be, but it'll be an interesting year for them. I think that they did improve a lot of the stuff that they were bad at last year, which I know like one of the big things was they had a really really bad offensive line. Uh, they like had a stat on here talking about the like 63 of the 74 sacks they gave up last season were directly attributed to their ta- uh, tackle play. And so it wasn't like that the defense was beating them or, or that the defense was schemed better than them. It was just that they were literally getting beat on blocks. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I think that they have pieces to be interesting, but I just don't think that they're going to make much noise. Um, oh, right there, especially Bill Callahan, coach offensive line. Uh, so, yeah, don't think they're going to make much noise. But they, uh, I mean, again, DeAndre Hopkins is DeAndre Hopkins. Calvin Ridley is a solid receiver. Uh, so their offense could be good, but it's just not enough to, mm-hmm. to make me think that they're going to make any kind of impact. I'm going to say Denver's next. Washington. Washington. Okay. Washington football well, team. What number is that, like 28? Yep. All right. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. So five teams left, including them. Yep. Them, Carolina, the Giants, Denver, Patriots. And to be honest, I mean, the commanders for me are like a pretty unknown. Uh, their biggest thing, obviously, is Jaden Daniels mm-hmm. getting drafted. Uh, that kid looks really, really good. Actually, their biggest thing is Dan Snyder doesn't own the team anymore. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's a big one, too. Uh, that is true. But, for but on, the, future, on the field, forward, yes, that's definitely uh, Jaden Jay, Daniels. Jaden Daniels is... Uh, I feel like because like see like that would be someone. It's like if uh, Minnesota brought in Jaden Daniels, then if I was like Justin Jefferson, I'd be like, oh, okay, cool. You know, it's like that seems like a guy that you'd be investing as like a franchise corner piece. JJ McCarthy just doesn't feel like that for me. But anyway, uh, Jaden Dan- uh, McD- almost called McDaniel's. Jaden Daniels. <laughs> Jaden McDaniel's is a basketball player. Uh, Jaden Daniels is gonna be good. I don't know if he's gonna be that good for Washington. I mean, they really only have Terry McLaurin. Uh, as like a proven receiving threat so he's not going to have a whole lot of tools to work with Uh, they'll probably have to try to do some work in the free agency market or trade to try to get something for him but I don't know what kind of assets they have left either Uh, so yeah I mean I guess uh, didn't they draft Sam Howell like last year I don't know if it was Notre Dame. It might have been like the year before, but he was their starter last year. And I think that was him. They're like, yeah, we we believe in Sam. He's going to be really good. I think he was like a passing yards leader. At least he was for a good chunk of the season. And they started off okay and then just couldn't win games. Who's their new coach? Because it was 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 Ron Rivera Rivera before. Um, I don't think he lasted the season. No, I think actually he might have. Did he? No, 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 never mind. Uh, Dan Quinn, I think. Oh, okay. That's where, okay. Yeah, Dan Quinn. Uh, he knows how to coach a defense. He does. He did it in Seattle. He's been doing it in Dallas. I don't remember how good the Falcons' defenses were when he was head coach. Yeah. Yeah, I was just looking through some of the more of their roster, and it's like... And they got Zach Ertz. Their running back is Austin Eckler, who's owed. And I just don't think it's very good anymore. Uh, so, yeah, their offense is... They have Luke McCaffrey, at least. So maybe he can have some of that Christian uh, magic. But, yeah, I just don't think that they have very many pieces around their young star. Um, so Jaden's going to be trying to pull a lot of weight in his rookie season. And don't think it's going to go very I I don't know if I have them last in their division because the Giants are there, but I mean, I, I don't have a lot of faith in Washington. If the Giants still had Saquon, I would put them over him. I just I don't really know what to say about them. Like I feel like it's the worst thing I can say is like I don't know what to say about them. I, I feel like Jaden Daniels will probably be pretty good. Mm-hmm. But we won't see a lot of it because there's not a great supporting cast aside from McLaurin. Yeah, it's like Zach Ertz is old. Austin Eckler is old. 
I mean, I guess at least the nice thing, it's like Zach Ertz is good tight end, so he's a good safety option. Same thing with Austin Eckler, he's an amazing receiving back, so they can run a ton of like little running back screens and just be like little dink and dunk passes to, you know, help build Jaden's confidence and stuff. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm sure that we'll see a lot of development from Jaden because he's going to just be thrown right into the fire. Uh, there's a chance that he pulls Offensive Rookie of the Year, depending on how well they are able It'll to be perform. like an RG3 situation. Yeah, yeah, I could see it. Um, I think my my pick for Offensive Rookie of the Year is probably going to be Marvin Harris in the third. I'm, I think I'm going to go Caleb, yeah. especially if I think the Bears are making the playoffs. I'll yeah. say Caleb, but if it's not him, I think it's definitely Marvin. Yeah, yeah, I could definitely see. I mean, like Caleb is, again, in such a good position uh, to succeed right away. And again, being in a position where he is going to start from week one, uh, so, yeah, I, it is hard to not pick Caleb, but I think that Marvin Harrison does have a good chance. I mean, uh, I think I saw something where it was like Arizona hasn't had a rookie receiver record 1,000 yards since like Anquan Bolden in 03. I think it did. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and it's like I bet I bet Marvin Harrison Jr. can get there. I mean, if, there, if Kyler stays healthy, I think that he'll get that mark. So we'll see. But, yeah. But I remember Washington. another time we were talking about earlier is how the Bears have never had, like, a 4,000-yard passer. Like, yeah. I, yeah, a 30-touchdown or 4,000-yard passer. And, like, with the dudes that Caleb has, I think he can get there. I could I, I could honestly see that. One or the other, 30 touchdowns or 4,000 uh, 4, passing yards. Um, yeah. They have a lot of a lot of pieces there. It'll just depend on how uh, – was it Matt Eberflus still there? It'll just depend on how well he can kind of put them together and bring out that potential. Right. Um, but yeah, so the commanders. So bottom four, I'm gonna go ahead and say it goes Denver, the Giants. I feel like the Patriots and the Panthers are the bottom two. I don't know who they'll have at the bottom because I've heard a lot of people say the Patriots are the worst team in the league right now. I I think I'll put them above Carolina here. Yeah, so you were you were very close. You just flipped the first two. Denver uh, is behind the Giants. Really? Yeah, the Giants are at 29. Uh, which, I mean... You think the Giants are going to go on a dark horse playoff? <laughs> <laughs> I you think Daniel Jones? <laughs> they did, they did they draft did Malik Neighbors. Ago. They did draft Malik Neighbors out of LSU. And that dude is going to be a star. Um, so, I mean, they do have a wide receiver one now, mm-hmm. but they lost their running back. Um, they do have pretty good consistency for their front uh, offensive line. I think, like, four of their five starters are coming back, and they all were above average in, like, win rate for their pass block and win, uh, win rates. So, the offensive line shouldn't be... I just remember the offensive line not being very good. Let's see, like, from when I... Like, any time I got to see them, I was like, oh, man, that's... That's a turnstile. I mean, maybe that was a couple years ago. Like, yeah, maybe I think I'm the last season seasons. I think they did make a, a big improvement. So it's, I mean, I think it was just mostly like his Danny Dimes, you know, went down. Um, but yeah, I mean, Daniel Jones will at least have a chance to do something this year. Uh, he has assets around him that should enable him to at least have a shot at doing, you know, making an offense run uh so yeah we'll see i still like they're they're far far cry from a playoff team and i don't think that daniel jones is their quarterback of the future i think that they're probably going to be shopping in the quarterback market soon so who knows maybe uh gardner mentioned <laughs> will come and be their starter or oh, oh hey uh zach zach um zach wilson zach wilson he can stay in new york and have a career well, because he's in Denver right now. Oh, is he? Yeah, he's the backup in Denver. He's the second. Yeah, Bo Nix is going to be starting. Yeah, no, but I thought he was like third string. I thought there was another dude that beat him. Out. Stidham, I, I maybe he is. I think, I, Jared, I think Jared Stidham's. The oh, is he? Okay, my my bad then. I don't know. Maybe maybe one of them got released in the offseason. I don't That's know. Also possible. But I know that Bo Nix was named the starter. Yeah. But I guess sticking with the Giants, yeah, I don't really disagree with any of that. The, I don't I don't have faith in this team. I don't have faith in Daniel Jones. I think it was like one of his first plays of the preseason was a pick six. And like, yeah, he's a he's in mid season form and that's not good. No, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I just remember them like, okay. 
We need to re-sign Daniel Jones and we need to re-sign Saquon. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to give Saquon the tag and Daniel Jones the big contract. And I mean, I'll, hindsight is twenty twenty. We even at the time, I was like, that's... I don't like that decision. And to be fair, I feel like basically everyone at the time said that was the exact wrong way you could have done that. Yeah. And I think they're going to regret that. The moment they play the Eagles, they're going to regret yeah. that hard. And, again, just the the fact that Saquon went to the Eagles rather than it being like if he went to, like, the Panthers, you know, he'd be like, well, at least he's going to be on a garbage team still. And, like, no, he went to a playoff contender and made them better. And so it's like, oh, man. You better hope you don't play the Philadelphia Eagles now because they're going to beat the shit out of you. And you got to do it twice a year. They're going to beat the shit out of you. All right, so you said next is Denver. You want to take the lead on Denver? Uh, Yeah. Yeah, I mean, obviously Denver, uh, like we were saying, Bo Nix was named their uh, starting quarterback. So they are starting fresh and going with a new rookie quarterback. They uh, don't have a whole lot of good prospects, though. Um, I mean... Who even are their their guys? Cortland Sutton is getting older. He's still good. Uh, Javante Williams is a good running back, but they just don't have enough pieces to be good, I don't think. Also, uh, the Russell Wilson contract or whatever just like absolutely obliterated them. They have so much dead money on their books. They owe like $85 million in guaranteed money. So they don't really have cap space or like financials to go out and make deals or trade for people and I doubt they have uh, like draft capital to try to like trade for stuff so they're kind of in a rough spot uh, sad for our boy Jacob he's a really big Denver fan it's going to be a rough season I think for him but hopefully Bo at least has like some good growth and uh, who knows I mean maybe if they're able to draft a couple of decent receivers uh, to go with them uh, maybe they'll be somewhat relevant again but Sean Payton I mean Sean Payton is Sean Payton he can, might be able to do something mm-hmm. or totally run the the organization into the ground so, one of the other <laughs> I told you I had a big dark horse pick oh my gosh Denver in the playoffs <laughs> and no I'm not way. kidding it's cause Sean Payton Yo, so here's the thing <laughs> it's cause Sean Payton that's part of it <laughs> he's instituting the cause here's system. what cause last year Denver started off terrible. You know, like yes. they they looked really bad. It's like, okay, this was just year two of Russell Wilson. <laughs> and and like, year Russell one was Wilson not good. So bad. And as the year went on, though, it was like they're they're kind of getting their shit together. They lost by fifty to Miami, but they were getting their shit together. And around the middle of the season, like week eleven, week twelve, like no, they're. They're in the playoffs right now. Like, obviously, the season's not over. It's like, no, they're genuinely competing for a playoff spot. They just beat Kansas City. The defense is playing well. Russ has kind of gotten it together. It's not being talked about as much. But, no, he's actually playing well. Hmm. Denver could do this. And then it was this weird, like, hey, what if we just gave up? And we benched Russ because of some, like, contract bullshit going on. And we just packed in the season. Yeah. I genuinely feel like if they were if they kept playing, they might have. I'm not going to say for sure, but they really could have made a playoff spot. I feel like the defense is still good. Billy's got me hyped on Bo Nicks. <laughs> like I said, we got a friend who went to Oregon. I it's making me kind of confident in Bo Nix. I'm gonna say fuck it, dude. Denver gets a wild card spot. I would I would feel like considerably better about them if they didn't give up Jerry Judy. Uh, no, that's nothing to like. Fair. Cortland Sutton again is like getting so he's like getting older. He's like their only option. It feels like so dudes are just gonna double him, and I feel like Bo's gonna have a hard time. They're definitely gonna have to scheme because for one like. In college, Bo's, like, big thing was, like, he didn't really pass downfield a whole lot. He was known for doing, like, a lot of underneath passes, and he was extremely accurate. He was, like, the... I think he, like, broke the record for accuracy on passes, like, under 20 yards or something like that. He was, like, 84% or something like that completion rate. Um, But... So they're going to have to scheme, I think, a lot of, like, really short passes, like, you know, slants and short crosses. So... 
it'll be up to Sean Payton to try to figure that stuff out. Um, but who knows? I, I don't think that they're going to make the playoffs. <laughs> but, uh, you know, crazier things have happened. I'll be honest, you're probably right. <laughs> It, crazy things have happened, and I, I would feel really good for Jacob and for Billy if that happened, because I know that they would be really stoked. So, I, I'll buy in on the hype of them maybe getting a playoff spot. I don't know that it's going to happen, <laughs> but we'll see. Okay, so was it Carolina or New England? Next? It was New England next. Okay. Uh, with, they also have a rookie quarterback, Drake May, who's they have not starting. They said from Jacoby Brissett is going to be starting. Yeah, Jacoby Brissett, uh, Brissett is going to start. I think obviously, they're wanting to not do the Jaden Daniels route and be like, hey, just go play it right away and like find out what happens. Which, it's nice to have that uh, availability. Uh, Jacoby Brissett is a solid veteran, so he can hopefully try to pick up He's one of those Colt several starting yeah. quarterbacks. <laughs> hey, he held it down, bro. He held it down. Uh, but, yeah. I, uh, I, <laughs> they, I don't think that they have a whole lot going I on. I think they'll be better than the Giants. Hey! Maybe. Yeah, maybe. I mean, even last year, I remember those first few games. It was like the first two or three. They were losing, but they were consistently in a lot of those games. And then at some point, Mac Jones just broke. And I don't know what the hell happened. <laughs> but I, it was because the fan base turned on Mac Jones. <laughs> I, I don't think they're going to be super good. I had said earlier, I think they're going to beat the Bengals week one. Since he is a team that starts slow, I think not having Jamar Chase is going to affect them. Having a new offense, because I think that guy um, in Tennessee was their OC. I think there's going to be enough weaknesses in Cincy Week 1 that the Patriots are going to be able to upset them. <coughs> I don't think they're going to win a whole lot of games. I think they are going to be near the bottom of the league, like a top three draft pick or so. But I feel like at some point Drake May is going to start. No, that's what I was going to ask you. I was like, you think at some point he's going to... I do think at some point he'll start. And it's not like, oh man, they're going to really take off and start winning. But I feel like it's going to be a... we f- Kind of like with Jaden Daniels, we're, we're feeling really confident actually seeing him out there, seeing him play. Yeah. Hopefully in a year or two we can get some pieces, especially with like an early draft pick. Especially, for, yeah, like for the Patriots, if they get a really yeah, early I mean, pick, they're like, hey, we don't need a QB now. We can trade down. Just give us a bunch of shit. Look at what the Bears have right now. Like, I I think that's kind of what they're going to do. A two, three win-ish sort of team. But you're kind of going to feel good about it. Like, yeah, that's that's a high, that they're They're exceeding expectations by doing that. By winning any games. <laughs> uh, I will say, too, uh, the Patriots actually have the hardest strength of schedule in the league, which is pretty rough. Uh, that's that's rough for uh, a young quarterback. So, yeah. Um, it's going to be tough times in New England. And then that finally brings us to the bottom of the barrel, the Carolina Panthers. <laughs> they are going to be bad. And again, maybe that's also my Saints bias, just saying, look, if I can put a team in the division at the very bottom of the league, I will do it, but I, they're just going to, I don't think they're going to be fucking dog shit. Yeah. yeah. Do you have anything to add with Caroline? I, okay, I mean, do you think they are going to have the number one pick again? Uh, I'm going to say yes. I think it's going to be tough. I mean, them and the, them or the Patriots both have like, I think, equal opportunity to be at the very bottom and get the first round pick. Or the number one pick, I, I honestly think that the Patriots are going to end up with the worst schedule. Okay. Um, solely because I think that Bryce Young does have upside. Uh, I do think he's going to be a little bit better this year. Hopefully, they've gotten some help on the line. They, I, they did pick up Robert Hunt and Damian Lewis, uh, so they at least got some new faces. Uh, they traded for Deontay Johnson uh, from the Steelers, and they drafted Xavier Leggett out of South Carolina. Also, I don't know if you've seen the like videos of Xavier Leggett. Oh, that dude is out. hilarious. He's like the most country dude. <laughs> like, oh yeah. no, I think I. I, I the video where he's I, like, he's like, I don't even think I'm that. Yeah, country. I've seen and that. He's got like the like strongest South yeah. Carolina. Like, he's like, I don't even think I'm that country. Like, he, he's like the most country dude on the team by far. Uh, yeah, I, he he is uh, interesting. I, I'm excited to see him play. Uh, they do have a new head coach too, Dave Canales. So, I mean, that's a lot of. A lot of, a lot of turnover. turnover. Um, 
So we'll see. They did get Jebby and Clowney uh, on defensive side. He is a lot, a little bit older now. He's thirty-one. So, but yeah, we'll see. I just don't think they have very, very, J.C. Horn. Uh, I forgot about him. He's a, he's he's a good receiver. So, yeah, and they have Chubba Hubbard. Oh, and they drafted Jonathan Brooks out of uh, Texas too. But so here's the question: though. In four or five years, maybe the Panthers will be okay. So you've gone through the entire league. What are your playoff picks? Going through the entire team, having a day or so to sleep on the first half. So, I, I go start we'll with the back. AFC. Yeah, because we'll go back up to the top of the list because we had them by divisions. Let's see, because the guys at the top, we almost had all of them winning their division. I think we were both saying San Francisco winning the West. Yeah. Philly winning the East. I think we both had the Lions winning the North. I have Tampa winning the South. Did you say Tampa or did you go with Atlanta? I I think Atlanta is going to win their division. Okay. And then for the wild cards, I have the Packers, the Rams, and the Bears. And there's a part of me that's like, I kind of want to put Seattle in there, but I'm not as sure. But th- that's kind of where I'm at with the wild cards. What about you? I think I'm going to give the boys, the Cowboys, a wild card slot. I think Tampa Bay. And... Now you're not as high on Green Bay, but do you think they'll get it? Do you think the Rams? Uh, yeah, I think I have to give it to the Packers. And honestly, man, yeah, I'm going to say, I was going to say, I was like, I almost think I should pick Rams over the Bucks, but I'm going to stick to my guns. Bucks, Cowboys, Packers. And then going to the AFC, and we both have Baltimore winning the North. Yep. I know we split on the East. I had Miami and you had Buffalo. Yeah. Yeah, and that's a tough one still. I still think I'm going to go with Buffalo, but yeah. I think we both had Houston winning the South. Yep. You had the Chiefs winning the West, and I think the Chargers will. <laughs> like, I think the Chargers will make a push, win the West, and I think my wild cards are the Chiefs, the Broncos, <laughs> and the Colts. Yeah, I, I, I definitely think that the Chiefs are going to lock up their, their division. Uh, but I could honestly see San Diego getting a wild card slot. So I'll say them. Uh, let's Miami? See. Miami would be a good one. Who else do we have as like a second out in their division that would be a good one? I would say probably the Bengals. Yeah. And then maybe someone in the South, like the Colts or the Texans, or not the Texans, uh, the Jags. Yeah. I'm going to say Miami and you know, I'm going to say the Colts. Okay. So, yeah, that's uh, who was the first one I said? Miami uh or you have the you have the Chargers. Chargers, yeah. Chargers, Miami, and the Colts. So from those teams, Super Bowl picks. I really it's hard not to say that the Super Bowl is just not gonna be a rematch. But I think I think that the Lions are gonna make it this okay. year. And I think it will be against Chiefs, and they're going to stop the three-peat. So, Dan Campbell going to stand on business. So I've got the Chiefs in a wild card spot, and I still think they're going to the Super Bowl, and you know, I'm kind of torn between the 49ers, the Lions, and the Packers. Mm-hmm. So fuck it, I'll say the Lions, because I want it to be the Lions. Yeah. So I'll say... I want to root for the Lions. <laughs> I'll say Chiefs, three-peat, and they beat the Lions. No! <laughs> That's that's my prediction. And Mahomes wins another Super Bowl, Super Bowl MVP. MVP. And probably does like some weird behind the back sidearm where he throws it between his legs and bounces <laughs> it off Jason Kelsey's head. And then everyone's like, wow, look at that crazy trick shot he did. God, so tired of hearing about 
Patrick Mahomes. All right. Is, anything else? Uh, do we want to run through our uh, in, end of year award? Picks? Oh yeah. Um, it's seven twelve. Oh, oh, kickoff is very soon though. Yeah. Okay, so MVP. <sighs> I'm not gonna say Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> I am going to say. Mm, you know what? CJ Stroud. That's not a bad pick. Second year, like second year MVP. <sighs> Who do I think? You know, if I have them winning the division, let's say Justin Herbert. Yeah. I'll, I'll go with Justin Herbert. Defensive player of the year. I had said yesterday I'll pick Josh Allen from the Jaguars. Yeah. And uh, I said that. I think that Michael Parsons is going to break the sack. That's right. So <laughs> Michael, Michael Parsons. Parsons should, if he does, win. He should win the uh, Defensive Player of the Year. If not, it's going to be Miles Garrett again. All right. Offensive Player of the Year. Who do you got? <sighs> Probably Josh Allen. He's just so good. He puts I'm, up so much. I'm really tempted to say Josh Allen because I think, like, I don't have the Bills in the playoffs, but I think he's going to have a crazy season. Mm-hmm. Another part of me, though, is like, I think Tyreek is going to get the 2,000. <laughs> I can he, like, he almost did if he didn't get injured. And I'm like, I, I'll i say Tyreek, but I'm like very close to saying Josh. I'm, you know what? If I say Josh Allen, I have Josh Allen winning Offensive and Defensive Player of the Year. <laughs> there you go. Which <laughs> Josh Allen sweep. <laughs> uh, it's a fuck it. I'll say Josh, Josh Allen, Allen just to see how that goes. So then we have Offensive Rookie of the Year. Mm-hmm. I think you said you had Marvin, and I said I have Caleb. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like I said, it is hard to pick against Caleb because he's just in such a good uh, setup. And he, obviously, number one overall pick due to going to be good. But I do think that Marvin Harrison Jr. has a good shot at it, especially if he puts up, like, over 1,000 yards in his rookie season. I think that's going to be a really good look. So, uh, yeah, defensive rookie of the year. I'm really not as sure... But I feel like the name I heard the most during the draft was Dallas Turner. So I think I'll go with Dallas Turner. Yeah, Dallas Turner was super good in college, uh, coming out of Alabama. And I definitely could see him uh, winning it. The only other person that I even had in mind was uh, Layatu Latu, the UCLA dude that was taken. Uh, so I'm going to say Latu because... Uh, he also is in a pretty good setup. Again, with him being opposite Quiddy Pay, they're going to be really tough on each end to try to stop. So I think they're both going to be able to put up pretty good numbers. Uh, so, yeah. All right. Comeback player of the year. <laughs> well, after I, after you said Anthony Richardson, I was like, yeah, man, it's probably going to be Anthony Richardson. <laughs> oh, uh, but just for the sake of not saying the same thing, <laughs> uh, Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> okay. I think, yeah, like I, I'm sick of Anthony Richardson. And then coach of the year. Dan Snyder. Dan Snyder. <laughs> the guy that made iCarly. <laughs> so Dan Campbell? No. No. Dan Snyder. <laughs> no, yeah. Uh, no, I do think Dan Campbell. Probably. I mean, especially if the if the Lions are able to get to the Super Bowl, uh, then yeah. But it's like crazy, too. It's like, how is... Andy Reid just, like, not, like, coach of the year every year. It's kind of like with Bill Belichick. Yeah, that's also true. Um, I'm kind of tempted to say him. I'm kind of time- tempted to say Mike McDaniel. Yeah, I do. Or I, Jim Harbaugh. My personal pick would be Mike McDaniels, just because I love Mike McDaniels. Um, so, honestly, I would love to see him win it, too. I do think that uh, Dan Campbell's probably going to win. Like, I had said yesterday that the Dolphins will get the one seed. So I, I, based on that, I'm they like, do, maybe yeah. I should kind of just say Dan Camp or Dan Campbell. <laughs> Dan, Dan Campbell's Dan, everywhere now. Miami was was so good. Dan Campbell's gonna win Coach of the Year anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I guess I'll go with Mike McDaniel. All right. Yeah, I, I can definitely get behind that. I like Mike McDaniel a lot. So yeah, we'll see how the year plays out. We're actually about to see. The Ravens and, and the, Chiefs. the Chiefs. We'll see. We'll see in a few weeks just how fucking wrong I am about Denver going to the playoffs. <laughs> hey, who knows? Maybe this NFL year will be like a total like shakeup. Like the Chiefs are zero and four, 
when we do in the next video. I and think their next game after the Ravens is Cincinnati. It's like they could start 0-2. We're going to be 0-4. Denver's 4-0. Carolina's 4-0. <laughs> <laughs> and, all and the Giants still suck. <laughs> all expectations have been subverted, except the Giants are still bad. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, I'm definitely interested to uh, see how some of these new teams kind of play out, especially with so many uh, kind of like big names moving around to different franchises. Uh, obviously, like, you know, Kirk Cousins and... Uh, even stuff like coaching stuff, like like with uh, like Belichick being gone. Yeah, Belichick being gone and uh, Harbaugh being in at San Diego. So, yeah, definitely a lot of storylines to follow throughout the year. So we'll definitely have to check in on a lot of them. All right, and we'll do that in about four or five-ish weeks. See you then.